This is WJAR, Channel 10, Providence. And now, from Southern New England's leading news station, Frank Coletta. Art Lake. And Tony DiBiazio. This is News Watch 10 at sunrise. Good morning. Welcome to another Monday. A pretty special Monday in Warwick. This morning, everything is in place at Warwick's Green Airport for the first ever arrival of the supersonic Concorde jet to Rhode Island. The SST is bringing 90 passengers to New England for the U.S. Open Golf Tournament in Brookline, Massachusetts. The trip is getting a lot of attention because it is the first scheduled landing of the Concorde at Green and because city officials for a while tried to stop the jet's arrival. News Watch 10's Bob Ward is live at Green. Bob, what's happening out there now? Frank, it's a little bit noisy now as the morning commuter flights get ready to leave Green. Everyone here, though, is ready to swing into action once the Concorde lands in about an hour and a half. And you might be able to see behind me on the roof of the parking garage, there's a line of people already here armed with cameras, and they all have a front row seat for the Concorde when it does land. Now, basically, everyone is ready to execute a plan that officials say takes into account just about anything that can happen. One of the biggest concerns about the Concorde's arrival was traffic. Post Road, the street running in front of the airport, is under construction and causing tie-ups. But all construction along Post Road is suspended today for the Concorde's visit. To further ease a traffic crunch, some businesses along Post Road are making their parking lots available for the general public. For the best view of Concord, authorities suggest Industrial Drive. It is closed to through traffic, and officials say it offers the clearest view of the landing. Also, Airport Road. Depending on the Concorde's landing path, this may also be a good place to watch the SST touch down in Rhode Island. Now, the Concorde left England at about 5 o'clock in the morning, our time. It'll be here at 8.05. It is scheduled to come in over Airport Road and land on runway 23L. So if you're going to come down to watch the uh, Concorde land, Airport Road might not be a bad place to see it. Uh, on the way down on the highway, though, there are signs that will direct you right to uh, Green Airport. So officials really have gone all out to try to accommodate all of the people that are expected to be here. And as I said, there are some people here already, and they, of course, have some great seats to see the Concorde. The weather out here is beautiful, and you should be able to get a nice, uh, clean sight of the Concorde when it comes down. Frank? Yeah, it's a perfect day for it, Bob. Yeah, Thank sure you. sure is. And uh, we'll be joining you again at 725 for a preview of the last-minute activity. And, of course, uh, just before 8 o'clock this morning, we'll be uh, continuing our 2 Minutes of 8 local news update to bring you uh, the information just before the Concorde lands and, of course, the landing itself. Good morning, Arthur. As a matter of fact, I have two other airplanes up this morning, Larry Mistretter 1 and Scott Volker and another, so we can give you the proper coverage. All the commuter information is right on time. Nothing is being delayed today. Let me give you maybe some helpful hints for those of you who may not want to follow the crowds to the airport. The SST would be making its approach, say, from over East Providence someplace, assuming they will continue to use 2-3 left, and over Providence and then right up the Narragansett Bay, right up the Providence River, come on in. So any vantage point from uh, Edgewood on one side and Patuxet to East Providence Shore or maybe that Veterans Parkway walkover as opposed to fighting the crowd. When it takes off, it'll go over Coesit and down through that away. I have an airborne for the news watch at sunrise, spy in the sky, Tony DiBiazio. As for the latest on the arrival of the SST, the Concorde at Green Airport, the first such arrival of the Concorde, preparations still being made, as you can see, at the Green Airport Tower. We're told that the flight of the Concorde is on schedule. It left London about uh, 5 this morning, scheduled to arrive at 8.05 this morning at Green Airport. If you want to get to the airport or somewhere near the airport to see the landing and perhaps the takeoff later on in the morning, get on the highway. There are lots of signs, we're told, on the highway directing you to the proper spots. And don't forget, our coverage of the situation begins just before 8 o'clock this morning. Our 2 minutes of 8 local news update will be extended so that you'll be able to see the landing right here on Channel 10. All right. Uh, road work along Post Road and Airport Road, you know, by the airport, uh, has been halted for today, so all the lanes are open. Okay, 380, negative contact hit. Uh, and down at 24 South, still some work going on there, as well as on some of the city streets around. Parking over on Industrial Drive is getting kind of thick by the airport. Again, if you don't want to drive down to the heavy stuff, how about Veterans Parkway walkover? You'll see the airplane make the approach anyway from below, if nothing else. I have an airborne for the news watch at sunrise. Spy in the sky, Tony DiBiazio. Now, to the airport. News Watch 10's Bob Ward is standing by with... Hundreds, perhaps thousands of spectators. We'll leave the crowd estimate to Bob. 
But at any rate, what's happening over there? Frank, uh, I, I would think it would be safe to say there are thousands here, but uh, police are saying, though, that there are there is much less than 20,000 people, which was expected. They say there are fewer people than that here to watch the SST land. Now, the SST, I am told, the Concorde is on time, so in just about any time now, we should be able to see the Concorde as she approaches Green Airport. She is landing on runway 23 left, that's over Airport Road. When she lands, she will taxi over the, to the terminal and offload about 80 or uh, 90 uh, British passengers bound for the U.S. Open in Brookline, Massachusetts. Among them, some professional golfers, including, I'm told, Lee Trevino, who is making this trip on the Concorde. The spectators, as I said, Warwick police ex say there are fewer than the 20,000 that were expected here. They got here awfully early, the spectators. When we got here at 6 o'clock this morning, many of them were already over on the parking garage. Right now, all the levels of the parking garage have people sitting, standing, taking pictures, getting ready for this for this really big moment. And I'm also told up there there are people selling T-shirts, Concord T-shirts. Concord Mania is hitting Green Airport. In fact, at the uh, at the lunch counter here at the airport, there is also a Concord special. So everybody here is very very excited about the Concord's imminent arrival. They left England at eight o'clock this morning, and coincidentally. They're landing here in Rhode Island at 8 o'clock in the morning, so they won't have to change their clocks at all when they get off. The crew, there are two pilots on this crew. There are, There is one flight engineer and six cabin crew members. Now, the pilots are highly qualified to fly this airplane. Uh, they have to go through a lot of testing. Every six months, uh, they go through medical checks, flight simulators, and every 12 months, their competency is checked. So they go through a lot to learn how to fly these big planes. And I'm also told that there are only 100 pilots who, um, who can fly the SST. And I understand you can see the, the Concorde as she approaches right now, just a short distance away here from, from Green. I can see it right now as she comes down. You can just start hearing it, too. She's traveling at subsonic level. Ever since she got 200 miles off the coast of Rhode Island, the Concorde started traveling at subsonic speeds. The Concorde is capable of traveling twice the speed of sound. That is Mach 2. And if you want a better idea of how fast that is, that is over 1,300 miles an hour. And there she is. Only about 16 of uh, these planes exist in the world. Um, they are owned by two air companies, British Airways and Air France. Very, very limited uh, airplane. And uh, right now, you can see it just uh, circling over Green Airport, getting ready to land. Now, the nose of the Concorde is dipped down. That isn't uh, due to any uh, aerodynamic design or anything. That has been, it dips down in the front there so the pilots can get a better view, a better sight of the ground. Because otherwise, the nose is pointed straight up and they'd be looking right up into the sky. But right now, they're probably getting their directions, instructions from the, uh, from the tower here at Green Airport getting ready for last-minute instructions on, on exactly where to land. Now, this runway here at Green is long enough to handle the Concorde, but it is not long enough, I am told, by Transportation Department officials to handle the Concorde on a regularly scheduled basis. They tell me that normally she travels a lot heavier than she is right now. Of course, she just traveled across the ocean, so she has expended an awful lot of fuel. But beyond that, there are not the uh, passengers. She can hold up to 100 passengers. She, right now, about 90 people are on board that plane. So she is lighter, and that means that it doesn't need as much space to land here at Green Airport. And when she takes off at about 9.30, uh, she will not be fully fueled, because otherwise she would not be able to take off he from here at Green. The uh, runway just is not long enough. Transportation Department officials say that that is one reason, another reason, why the Concorde will not be regularly running in and out of Green Airport. A lot of people who live around this airport are worried about that. They don't like the fact the Concorde is coming here. They don't like the sound of the engine. It's, they think it's too loud. And they're also worried about the Concorde becoming uh, a regular thing here at Green. Well, the Transportation Department says that is not so. That can't happen because physically the airport cannot handle that. Right now, you can see all the different people that are coming out to see the Concorde. And really, they're coming from all over the area to see this plane. Uh, many of them are on the parking garage. Um, there are about five levels there, really packed. Roofs of buildings, people just everywhere, taking advantage of what is really an historic moment here in Rhode Island aviation history, having the supersonic jet land here. There's also an awful lot of people. Most of the people are down on Industrial Drive, which is over on the south end of the airport. Uh, the uh, state has and the city has closed off that area to allow people to park there and watch the airplane come down. The weather, as, I, as I've said earlier, is hazy out here, but it is clear. And uh, 
Everybody that came out here should have a good view of the Concorde when she comes down. And right now I can see it, she's approaching the runway. And it's a sight that, unlike any other I've ever seen before. I've never seen an SST in person, and I've never seen one land except on television. And this is quite a sight to see it come just looming forward as it is right now. The nose of the plane, it kind of looks like a big bird up there coming down. Big seagull. Of course it is, and of course it's a very expensive, world-class airliner that is uh, coming down on Green Airport right now. Now, even with those four Rolls-Royce engines, transportation department officials say she doesn't make much noise on landing. Any more noise than, say, a 747. And here it comes. This is the moment everybody down here has been waiting hours for. People in the state have been waiting days for all the planning, all the preparation, all for the single moment when the Concorde lands here in Rhode Island. on the uh, airplane that has just landed. Now from here, the uh, Concorde will be only here for about an hour and a half. It uh, will pick up 50 passengers from here in Rhode Island, travel over to Kennedy Airport in New York, and uh, then it will go back to England. It will make a return flight back to England. A busy day in the life of the Concorde. Uh, but it will not come back here to pick up the people it has dropped off. The people who, um, it will not come back to Rhode Island. The people who have taken the Concorde to Rhode Island, if they're going to take the Concorde back to England, they'll probably have to pick it up in New York because this is the only time that the Concorde is scheduled to land in Rhode Island. The state has promised that, uh, transportation department officials have promised that, and they said that is the premise behind this entire trip. They say it makes the state look good. They say it focuses a lot of attention on Rhode Island and on the tourist industry in Rhode Island, which of course is very important. And they said that is the reason why the Concorde is coming here, not as a prelude to any future landings or takeoffs of the Concorde. Uh, the, the Concorde makes regular trips across the ocean uh, many times a week. Um, and as I said, there is about 16 of them. And today we just saw one land here in Rhode Island, an historic visit from the Concorde to the state of Rhode Island. Bob Ward reporting live, Newswatch 10. Okay, thank you very much, Bob. Uh, by the way, the uh, Warwick Beacon... Uh, characterized Warwick Police Chief Wesley Blanchard as predicting that there might be a traffic jam uh, of proportions comparable to what they have on the L.A. freeway. We Another clear sign that Rhode Island is being put on the worldwide map. The world's fastest commercial plane arrived in our state. 